speaker is Professor Avi Weizmann, and he will talk about novel drugs for the treatment of schizophrenia and bipolar disorders. This is not the first schizophrenia drug. The first schizophrenia drug is now in clinical trials with uh, a BioLine. It's BL1020, the, the uh, flagship of uh, BioLine, and we will be happy to have them take, or somebody else take, the second one. Thank you very much. I hope that you have the patience, you know, to hear another lecture, the last one at least. So I'll talk today about the novel drugs for the treatment of schizophrenia, which were developed together with Dr. Reed Gilat, who is with us, and Professor Dr. Moshe Portnoy from the Department of Chemistry in Tel Aviv University. You know that schizophrenia is a complex disorder, multidimensional disorder associated with positive symptoms, negative symptoms, cognitive deficits, comorbid conditions like substance abuse, anxiety, aggression, mood symptoms like depression, hostility, hopelessness, suicidality, and most of the current treatments are efficacious against the treatment of positive symptoms. However, they are not effective in the treatment of negative symptoms, cognitive deficits, comorbid conditions, and mood symptoms. Actually, the, lead, the limiting social occupational functioning of these patients. The current, the current pharmacotherapy is based on blockade of D1, D2, D4 dopamine receptors, 5-HT2A, 5-HT2C serotonin receptors, as well as blockade of muscarinic receptor, alpha adrenolytic activity, and blockade of histamine receptor H1. There is no effect on another very important and relevant system, the glutamatergic system. Glutamate is very important in the regulation of the dopaminergic activity, and as you can see here, I don't have a laser pointer here, maybe this one, yes. As, as you can see, the descending glutamatergic at the space wave from the prefrontal cortex to the, to, the, to the nucleus accumbens regulates the activity of the GABAergic system. If there is a deficit in glutamatergic stimulation, there is a deficit in GABAergic activity, there is a deficit in the inhibition of the ventral tegmental area dopaminergic neurons, and there is overactivity of the mesolimbic pathway. In another important place, if you have a deficit in glutamatergic activity, there is, there is decreased stimulation of the mesocortical pathway, leading to deficits in cognitive functioning and negative symptoms, while the overactivity of the mesolimbic system is associated with the delusions and hallucinations, the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So an agent that can at the same time, block the dopaminergic system, but also stimulates glutamatergic and NMDA activity can be of benefit in the treatment of schizophrenia, better than the current available drugs. So to this end, we developed a novel, novel psychotropics with potent anti-serotonergic activity, weak anti-dopaminergic activity to avoid extra pyramidal symptoms, and with partial glutamatergic agonistic activity. These agents may be the best, actually, for the treatment, not only the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, but also the cognitive deficits and the negative symptoms. These agents may be also of benefit in the treatment of bipolar patients and unipolar patients, unipolar depressed patients with psychotic symptoms. So the, idea, the concept is, to connect to via a spacer, a non adrenalizable spacer, high efficacious antipsychotic drug with low activity at the D2 receptor to a positive modulator of the NMD receptor. Thus, we can get a new molecule with activity at the D2 receptor with effic effect, good efficacy for positive symptoms, and at the same time, positive modulatory activity at the end of the receptor, resulting in beneficial effect in negative symptoms, mood symptoms, and cognitive deficits. So this is the idea.
Oh, of course, it's a small, relatively small molecule that can penetrate the BBB, which fits the Lipinski rules, Lipinski laws. So first of all, let's see the in vitro data of these new, new molecules. These are two representatives of the molecules, PGW4, PGW5, and the comparator, a very established uh, antipsychotic, olanzapine. As you can see, this, these agents are potent serotonergic antagonists, 5 ht 2 a They are weak H1 receptor antagonists, which is an advantage. You don't get the appetite stimulation and sed sedation. They are weak D2 receptors and the other D, D family receptors, so they are not associated with, they seem not to be associated with extra pyramidal symptoms. They have a weak positive agonistic activity, at least this one, on the glutamatergic receptors, and one of them has also inhibitory effect at the trans glycine transporter. You know that glycine is a naturally occurring positive modulator of the NMD receptor. So you can get, at the same time, antagonism of the dopaminergic system, weak antagonism, strong antagonism of the serotonergic system, and positive modulatory activity at the NMD receptor. Now what about you know, animal models? We use three animal models, amphetamine model as a, as a classical model of dopaminergic release related psychosis, MK801 is an agent inducing glutamate deficit, and a catalepsy model is a model for EPS. As you can see, the PGW agent decreases the amphetamine-induced hyperactivity in the, when you give the amphetamine, while in the under control status control conditions, there is increase in the activity of the mice, which indicates partial agonistic activity at the dopaminergic system, which is an advantage. In the presence of excess of dopamine, these molecules behave like antagonists, which, are, which is required for the anti-positive symptoms, while in the presence of lower dopamine presence, like in the deficit in the cortical pathway, there is agonistic activity. Next model, the hyperactivity induced by the anti-glutamatergic agent. You can see that the PGW molecules attenuates the hyperactivity induced by the blocker of the NMDA neurotransmission. What about catalepsy, extrapyramidal status? As you can see, there is no pro or there is no cataleptic effect in mice of these molecules given up to 50 milligram per kilogram, which is above the dose required for the antipsychotic activity. The dose required for the antipsychotic activity is between 25 milligram per kilogram to 30. What about, you know, in vivo data? We use two in vivo studies, two in vivo models. One is to show its activity in a depression model, the forced swim test, and the other one to, to examine its activity at a cognitive test, in this case, Morris Water Maze model, which examines the activity of this agent in special memory, special memory cognitive task. As you can see in the Morris Water Maze study, there is a clear antidepressant activity of these agents. As you can see, the agent reduces the immobility time of, of mice exposed, of rats exposed to this model and increases the distance moved by them. The same was true also for an anxiety model, open field, uh, field study. And in the cognitive domain, as you can see, the administration of this molecule, PGW4 in this case, at this dose, attenuates the cognitive deficit the interference with learning in the Morris Water Maze, in the Morris Water Maze test induced by, PK, by MK801. So there is enhancement of cognitive ability, at least in this model of learning. So in summary, PGW at least four and five, we are developing screening for several molecules, are potent candidates for treating schizophrenia. 
including negative symptoms and cognitive deficits. In the in vitro domain, these molecules possess a weak antagonistic activity at the D2 receptor, potent strong 5-HD2A antagonistic activity, which is needed for the treatment of positive symptoms and for, the, for atypicality, meaning treatment of, of schizophrenia without extrapyramidal complications and without hyperprolactinemia and the suppression of cognitive ability. There is a weak positive glutamatergic activity. You know that in this molecule you should avoid potent NMDA activity since it will be associated with neurotoxicity. So weak positive glutamatergic activity is an advantage. It can be, it can be beneficial for the treatment of negative symptoms and cognitive deficits. There is a weak H1 antagonistic activity in contrast to the most available atypical currently used antipsychotics, meaning there will be mean appetite stimulation. This is the metabolic side effects of the major complication of the new antipsychotics. And our in vivo data indicating that these molecules possess antipsychotic activity, not accompanied by sedation or catalepsy. They possess anxiolytic activity, antidepressant activity, at least one of them, potential cognitive enhancing activity, and they seem to be safe and well tolerated. So they are appropriate as a new treatment for schizophrenia, combining the properties of the traditional antipsychotics with positive NMDA glutamatergic activity. Thank you very much for your patience.